Helen, would you tell me your story? Because I, I think when you were first diagnosed with breast cancer, you had an eight-month-old baby, is that right? Yes, that's right. Then my son was eight months. I just had a shower one evening and I got out of the shower and I just put a bit of moisturiser on. And fortunately for me, I found a lump in my breast and um, showed it to my husband and he said, yes, that's a lump. I didn't think it was anything. I'd got a small baby who I'd been breastfeeding and so my breast had had an awful lot of change. I rang my mum and it was my mum who said, no, you need to go and get this checked out. So I had my mammogram on the 2nd of December and, um, and from that day until the 14th of December, so less than two weeks. A really I'd, short space of time. Yeah, I had my uh, mastectomy on the 14th of December. Very frightening. From the moment you're told it's cancer, in my point of view, I just wanted it gone. And to know that someone was doing something and everyone was so kind and so nice and made me feel like it was really normal and don't be frightened and you'll be all right. You hear the word cancer and you think, oh, that's it. And you know, I had a small baby. I, had the, I was just over 30. I thought this isn't fair, but I was just in such a whirl. And actually once I had my surgery, psychologically for me, it was great because it, it was gone. The next step was just I felt to preventing anything coming back or preventing a rogue cell which might grow. I was going to be okay. That's how I always looked. And presumably it. you lost your hair. Yes, I did lose my hair. Losing my hair I found very traumatic and way more traumatic than my surgery actually. I didn't want to look ill and I didn't want to look like I had cancer and I didn't want to be treated differently and but once you start chemo, you start to look ill. I did wear the cold cap to begin with, which helps maintain your hair. And I had much longer hair in those days and um, my hair just went very thin and poor. And I could tie it back, fortunately, to cover my ever-growing bald spot. <laughs> and, um, and then, um, but then a very nice nurse at the Marsden said to me, you know, you are going to lose it. And the type of chemo I was on, I couldn't wear it as well because it was too long, the process. And so, yes, I did eventually lose it all and it was very, very traumatic, very upsetting. I didn't recognise myself in the mirror. You look characterless. You know, when you have no eyebrows, no eyelashes, no hair, and you know, and the side effects of the chemo, I felt quite bloated. But it is a very short period of time, and I had a brilliant friend who I'd worked with who had been through a same process, and she said to me, you must look at this like it's a really weird hobby you've taken up. You're gonna look back in a year's time and think, Oh, that's really weird. She goes, but just look at it. This is a really weird hobby you take up, but you will give it up and it will be fine. Fantastic. Yeah, I know. And I really, it really stuck with me that. Being a new mum is really, really tough without being ill and having all this treatment to contend with. Did you have a lot of support? My husband was amazing and my parents who live in Sheffield were both absolutely brilliant. But my mum in particular, um, she came down every other week for a full week and looked after me, fed me, looked after Ben. You know, we did lots of things together but on the days where I just maybe wasn't up for it, she would look after Ben. So it was really great and just built the most amazing relationship which she has to this day with Ben. And, you know, it's, it was, we had some great times, really fun times as well as some, there's no one like your mum to say, go to bed and, or look after yourself. So Helen, 10 years in remission, looking back on that situation, how has it changed your life? I appreciate everything a lot more. I appreciate the simple things in life. I'm very lucky I survived and I'm very lucky I have an amazing network of support both from the hospital and my family and uh, no it's it's changed me but I think it's changed me for the better. It made me realise the things I worried about don't matter. It's, it makes me appreciate everything, everything. Like my son starting secondary school you know, it's a really emotional time for anyone. Yes. But for me, I thought this is what I sat by the cot and, and prayed for. And prayed for. And I just thought, I just want to see you. And seeing him in his secondary school uniform, I thought, this is a milestone. You know, I'm really lucky. So all that support from your mum whilst you were unwell. And then it's no surprise that she did the, the first moonwalk with you. We'd seen it the year before the press coverage and my mum said, right, that's it, we're going to do it next year. And um, it was brilliant. I loved every minute. Everyone was so nice and you see so many of London's landmarks all lit up in pink and it's very emotional you know it, it, and I, there were so many different people there was men women young people old people all shapes and sizes if you're having a lull on the walk and you feel a bit Ooh. the one's so you know okay, you're right come on keep going and and everybody has an interesting story so 
you get chatting to people about you know why they're there and you know, brilliant it's such a lovely magical route as well so i definitely want to do it again and i have some great mates who had also said they'd like to do it so i may even if my mum peels off at the halfway i might go on the full thing thank you so much for sharing your story it was so lovely oh, thank you. and i will see you on the start line uh, 11th of may 2019 yes bring it on <laughs>